Hello, my dears, Daniela here, and welcome to another episode of the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. Today, I have a very special guest and actually a very dear friend of mine. Her name is Giselle Campbell. She is a solo esthetician. Well, actually, now she is a spa owner. When we first met, she was a solo esthetician. And since she has grown and now hired an esthetician for her spa, Elevate Aesthetics, Um, And I wanted to share her story with you because it's so, so powerful. I know so often you'll hear, um, you know, I say all the time, the brand that does everything is the brand that does nothing. And we talk about the importance of niching down, but Giselle is a living example of how when you focus and you specialize in one piece of your business, which doesn't mean you have to throw away the other pieces, but when you specialize in one part of your business, it can actually grow and attract and build that business so, so much. It's so powerful to have one clear message and to have a specialty. So I want you guys to pay attention to her story. It's super inspiring. Her business has grown leaps and bounds year after year since she decided to put her energy into focusing on one particular niche. So it's a great story. I hope that you guys are inspired. If you guys have any questions, if you want to connect with myself or Giselle about this episode, be sure to head over to the Spa Marketing Made Easy Facebook group and tag us in there. And without further ado, I'll go ahead and play that interview. All right, Giselle, welcome to the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. So happy to have you on here. Hi, I'm really happy to be here. So Giselle, you own Elevate Aesthetics and you have such an inspirational story. I love, you know, we met, we started working together. What was it? Like it was several years ago. Yeah, at least a few years ago. Yeah, I'm thinking it was about three, three, about three years ago. I think I was pregnant. I think it, it must've been 2016 or 2017. Yeah, it was, it was just, yeah, around right the time where you were, you were just getting pregnant there. Okay. <laughs> you were still living in Hawaii. So yeah. I remember that. I remember <laughs> the background. It was really beautiful. <laughs> so we, when we started working together, you were really, you were working as a solo esthetician. Yes. You were doing what so many estheticians do offering waxing, offering facials, doing lashes, doing brows, doing microderm, who knows, like all the (laughs) treatments because you love it all, right? Yes, I do. I really love everything about aesthetics. It just makes me all giddy and happy. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, I wanted to put my hand into so many different things and so many pieces that I was basically had like a menu that was a mile long of different services. So that was, you think, I mean, so many people think, oh, that's, you know, I want to offer, everyone has skin. I want to offer treatments that are going to please everyone. And something that you decided to do was to really niche down and focus on waxing partially because that was what you enjoyed doing the most, right? You enjoyed doing Brazilian waxes. You're very fast at it. You're very efficient. it's fun for you. It's easy for you. I would die if I had to do Brazilian (laughs) waxes every day. I'm like the worst waxer, but (laughs) yeah, waxing just became something really natural for me. I, when I first started my business, gosh, it's been six years now, um, that I've been in business and waxing was not at all on my radar. Honestly, I thought that I was going to do facials day in and day out all day long, that I was going to be in a dark room, just doing all these relaxing type of facials. And that ended up not being what I ended ultimately have ended up doing. So when you envisioned that, the kind of dark room, the spa, the cucumbers on the eyes, the whole deal. (laughs) When that actually happened for you and you were doing those treatments, what was it? Did, did you just kind of try waxing and you just enjoyed it more because of the connection with the client? Like you could actually have a conversation with them or did you like the, like, what was it that really said, Hey, I'm not really into this 
kind of dark room, you know, relaxation thing, which is amazing, right? Yeah. We all love yeah. Oh, yeah. like that, but <laughs> the the actual benefits and feedback that you were getting from your clients when you were doing waxing was that part of what made you enjoy that more? Or well, you know, I'll tell you honestly, the reason why I got into Brazilian waxing specifically was because I had people asking me about it, asking for a service that I was not providing. Um, I did bikini waxes, but I didn't do full Brazilians. And it took me a while to really actually put it on my menu. I wasn't sure that it was something I wanted to do. At the time, I wasn't fully trained to do it. And I've always been a person that if I want to provide a service, I want to be thoroughly educated and trained on how to do it and do it properly. Especially when we're dealing with such a, a delicate area, you know, you oh, want yeah. to make sure that you're not ripping Absolutely. skin or, do, you know, I mean, that's... Yeah, it's intimidating. Not only is it intimidating for me um, not knowing how to do it, but for then the person that was going to have to come in and get the service mm-hmm. and not know me at all. And then all of a sudden have to feel exposed and, you know, for such an intimate waxing. Right. So I eventually, um, I got trained. And, um, I had some really great friends <laughs> who volunteered <laughs> to come in and let me practice, um, before I did my very first client. And, uh, my poor friends are so sweet to me <laughs> and have been so supportive <laughs> that, um, that they let me really practice and really learn to perfect what. I was about to offer to people. Um, and it was, it was nerve wracking. And I admit that very first client that I had took me an hour to wax her. Now it takes me anywhere between seven to 10 minutes. Wow. (laughs) Wow. And so part of the reason too, you know, when you looked at niching down and, and moving into kind of one thing that you're recommending doesn't mean that those other services have to go away. Right. But it just means that when you're on social, when you're on your website, when you're, you know, all of your promotions, you're positioning wow. yourself as a wax expert, getting them in the door that way. And then you can still offer those other treatments. Um, but when you were deciding to niche down, what was everything you looked at? I know the financials, right? Because yes. waxing, you know, for, for estheticians, if you look at the financials, your cost per treatment of waxing is incredibly low, especially yeah. if you're doing a facial, that a facial can be $10, 15 $20 of Absolutely. just product cost. Yeah. Yeah. With waxing, you if you're doing it efficiently and really um, doing it well, you will find that it's super inexpensive to do it. Um, the cost of the wax, the strips, if you, now it can be more expensive if you are doing hard wax, Mm -hmm. hard wax is more expensive to use, especially for those that do like full body hard wax. Then your profit margin is going to be a little bit lower than using soft wax. Soft wax is going to get you per can. You should be able to do anywhere between $300 to you know, maybe $500 on a can of wax, of soft wax, of services. And hard wax is going to be a little bit challenging to get that kind of profit margin out of a hard wax. But with hard wax, you're also not paying for your strips. This is true. Not paying for strips. Um, and that is the, the other benefit of that, of not having strips. But I will tell you that when I do a Brazilian wax, I use three strips. That's it. And for the sticks, I already know how many sticks I use per person. I know the strips, the amount I'm going to use. And so my profit margin, I've already have the cost of service down where I know it's only going to cost me like $4, 4 or $5 to do that. And so, that's pretty good. So what happened in your business when you really niched down? What changes did you see? Oh, I noticed a flood of new clients. Um, When I started focusing on waxing and started actually promoting waxing, I started to notice that uh, 
my sales, when I looked at my sales reports um, at the end of the month, I was noticing that the waxing category was far higher than any other service that I was providing. When I positioned myself as an expert, expert in the industry as far as um, locally, you know, letting people know that this is what I specialize in, I noticed that people were really flocking to that. They were flocking to the idea like, oh, well, you specialize. I wanted to go to somebody who specializes in this. And that's exactly what I would hear when someone would get on the table or before they would get on the table, I would ask them, how did you hear about me? And they would say, oh, I saw your reviews. Your reviews were excellent. And I saw your pictures, your website, and you just look really friendly. And all of those things had a play into that success of getting people in for waxing. And making people, one thing that you did too, that I, that I really loved and think aligns so well with waxing is I remember you asking your clients, what is it about me that makes you come and see me? And so many of them said, you make me feel comfortable. I feel safe and comfortable in this space which can be really intimidating for a lot of women who are getting a Brazilian who have never had that before. Yeah. I mean, typically it's like your partners and your gynecologist are the only (laughs) (laughs) Right. You know, to be there and, and to be in the positions that you have to be in to do waxing and it can be really uncomfortable for some people. And so having your website and having your social media be in this very loving self-acceptance kind of message that really helped a lot to be with someone like that who was going to do, you know, an intimate waxing. Oh yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. I mean, the biggest thing that I promote within my studio is that self love, self confidence um, idea. And also is, the meaning behind elevated aesthetics. When you come in for a service, whether it's waxing or um, facial services or whatever service that you come into, that you leave in a more elevated state. Meaning if you came in feeling kind of like shy about your body, kind of feeling not very confident, by the time you leave, my whole goal is not only to leave you hairless, but is also to make sure that you feel confident and that you feel... um, elevated in your spirit of coming in and leaving with that happiness. So that's your why. I love that. So like for the listeners out there, for the estheticians, when we talk about our why, like what our purpose is for doing something, it's so much more. It's you're really, you know, I love to say that we're selling confidence and we're helping lift women up and, and men, you know, but for most of us, it's <laughs> yeah. the majority of our clients are women and yeah. we want to make them feel better about themselves, feel more confident about themselves, you know, feel proud of who they are and how they look. And, and, and so by focusing on that, it does so much more. It's a bigger picture than just come get a Brazilian wax. Come, oh, get yeah. hair, come get, you know, it's a, it's a bigger piece. It's more meaningful of a vision. Mm -hmm. Um, which is why it works. Absolutely. A hundred percent agree with that. That is so, so important to me that, I mean, yes, the reason why they came in is for a wax, but for them to walk out feeling, feeling totally comfortable and, you know, smiling after that, like, oh, it wasn't that bad. Or, you know, it was different than what I expected, but in a good way, that really makes me, it makes my heart smile to see that, you know, to see people's reactions like that. Cause I think, okay, I did something really good here. So I want to continue that further, you know? So as you continued on with your, you know, waxing, specializing in waxing, did you, did you see a drop off in your other business of your facials and uh, and that, or did it just the whole thing continue to grow? You know, honestly, it really didn't. It would still grow because those waxing clients of mine would say, what other services do you offer? Oh, I saw you did facials, you know, and unfortunately at the time, um, I had to tell them that I was not accepting new facial clients and I was having to turn people away, even though they were coming, coming to me for waxing, 
I just didn't have the time to sit down and do a facial, which is sounds like a good hour- problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, like the hour long service, I mean, you got one person and with waxing, I could do four clients and, you know, in an hour. So it, unfortunately I had to tell people, well, you know, here's my recommendation, but it's still, people were still coming in. People were still wanting that wax, but they also wanted, you know, the spray tan or the lash lifts or, you know, the facials. They still wanted that other thing, but unfortunately my time was not there for that. And you've since hired somebody. So now you can accommodate <laughs> those. <laughs> those I know. I'm, and you know what? And that is exciting. And she's fantastic. And she has been working on filling those facial, um, requests. (laughs) So I want to just, I want to, I really wanted to share your story because I love how it shows that like you can, cause I know there's so many estheticians out there that want to do everything, but you can, it's such a great idea to really niche down, to really specialize in something, make one thing that you're known for. We saw with you that that did not hinder your other business. It only made it continue to grow to the point where you actually had to hire someone. And now you've expanded even further and you're actually training. You're working. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I am now an educator with Say Brazil Waxes. Um, it happens to be the brand that I use in my studio. Um, and it was created by Stephanie Lanes and she had put a call out for educators and I had been using the wax for at least a few years when she put this call out. And, um, I just approached them about it and they invited me to come to Dallas and get training as an educator. Um, And it's been a whirlwind since. It's been so exciting because it really feeds into that passion that I have about waxing. And now I get to go out there and teach other students or other estheticians how to wax properly and safely when it comes to Brazilian waxing. So it's just that like one step in front of the other. Like I love my coach talked to me about action creates clarity. And that's something that I just like hear in my head over and over (laughs) and over again, action creates clarity. And so it's like that one action you said, okay, this is what I like doing the most in my business. This is where I'm making the most money. I'm going to take a risk and take action to really specialize in that. Yeah. That led you to gaining more clients, to getting more people in the door, which then led you to be an educator. So it's yeah. like all these, I mean, could you imagine <laughs> that, you know, three years ago, if I'm like, oh, three years, you're actually going to be educating people. <laughs> right. No, <laughs> no. I mean, I would think, are they crazy? They want me to teach them? Like, what do I know? And <laughs> but I, I, that's such a good, I'm so glad that you said that. What do I know? Yeah. Because so many estheticians out there, you guys know so much more than you think you know. You guys are so awesome. And we don't realize that because so many of, who, of the people that we hang out with they're all, they all know the same stuff as we do, or a lot of the same stuff, you know? And so of course, you know, the difference between a hard wax and a soft wax, of course, you know, you know, all these different skincare ingredients or whatever, but most people don't know that, you know, and it truly is a gift to be able to share that expertise with others. So I, I want everyone listening to really pay attention to Giselle's story and know that it was simply her taking action. Yeah. That action created clarity for her and created a really amazing path where she's gone from a solo esthetician and your business has grown dramatically. I mean, do you know the percentages that your business? Oh gosh, it was like over, over 120% um, in my reports you know, at the end of the year, I looked and I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> every year it like jump, it jumps in that percentage. And I'm thinking, okay, I I'm, I'm going somewhere with this and, um, teaching and educating is definitely something that I'm finding even more passion for to help other estheticians grow in their waxing business, helping them 
really succeed in wax efficiently and safely. You know, we don't want them going out there and waxing without that proper training. Right. Because the last thing that you want is to hurt somebody. The last thing that you want is to get stuck on like, how do I get this wax off? Right. Right. And we've all been there. I mean, when I very first started that Brazilian waxing, I mean, the, the stories that I have about, you know, sweating, sweating behind my ears, just like heart racing, like, oh my goodness, the wax is stuck to their, you know, hair. Like, how am I going to get it out? And I'm, I mean, all of that. And you have, to, <laughs> you have to be cool as a cucumber, like, oh, nothing, nothing's wrong here. Nothing to see. <laughs> and, you know, I've been through all of that as well. And we all have a place to start. And being here at this point, um, as an educator, as someone who specializes in Brazilian waxing, it is when I look back and reflect on those, those places that I was at when I first, very first started, I think, wow, I've really come a long way and it's really exciting. It's exciting to be able to help people and help them grow. It totally is. And you do such a good job at that. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) So anything else you want to add to share with the estheticians who are listening about having the courage to niche down, having the courage to follow their dreams, you know, anything, any advice to those estheticians who are maybe where you were when you were just like, how, you know, I want to do everything. I love everything. (laughs) <laughs> you know, my biggest, um, my biggest advice is for them to really have a really um, heart to heart with yourself. Really th- look at the numbers, look at your reports, look mm-hmm. at what, <laughs> yeah, I know you're a report girl, <laughs> you love your reports, but um, you know, look at your reports, see where the money is coming from, because I mean, as you say, if you don't track it, then you won't be able to measure it, you know? So, you know, it can't be be managed. Exactly. You know, so, um, really looking at your numbers and looking at where those services are coming from. What, you know, I, I use a scheduling program that I can see all of those appointments of how many appointments I did in a specific category. So being able to notice that and say, Oh my goodness, I'm actually doing more brow waxes than I ever realized. And I'm getting a lot of money from that. So really start to focus on those. And when you finally have to, it's not that you're going to say goodbye to the other services that you will never do a facial again, or you won't do this. It's not about that, but it's recognizing the areas of of desire and recognizing what people are requesting and don't be afraid to step into the unknown because it can really blossom to something super, super awesome. This is why this is, I never, never, ever intended to be specializing in Brazilian waxing. It was not something that I thought in school, I wanted to Brazilian bikini waxing. I want to do that. No, it had wasn't even on the radar. And If you really step into your own zone of where that money is coming from, it is just going to evolve and elevate yourself into something beautiful. So that's what I think. (laughs) Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you so much for showing that action creates clarity. I love that so much. We'll include, so anyone who wants to follow Giselle, we've got her social media and website links um, below this. So be sure to catch her on social media. And Giselle, thank you so much for hanging out. Thanks for having me, Daniela.